Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to talk about enjoying our universal will. Okay, and universal will, incidentally, is like, you know, the term that I want to introduce into this because, like, generally it's not about refuting free will, it's about understanding that we have a will that's not free, and, it, you know, it, it just needs a term. Uh, causal will is a good term, um, but I think universal will, I think it's a better term because, you know, as I just described during this last show, it's the entire universe that actually is compelling our every decision. Okay, so now here's the, the point of this show is like, um, I should, I should, no, I, sh I should explain first um, what we mean by free will because, you know, this is like episode number 47 and, you know, um, I've done this a lot, but I, I need to continue doing this because it is important. Okay, when we say we have a free will, what we're saying is that our decisions are completely up to us. Nothing that is not in our control is taking part in the decision or making them making the decision for us completely. Um, very quickly, when you realize that everything has a cause, then you understand that free will is impossible because if the cause of our decision has a cause and the cause of that cause has a cause, then you've got this causal regression. Going back to before we were born, before the planet was created, um, simply um, compelling everything. Okay, and, and the other, yeah, I want to get into the other um, way of understanding, um, there may be a few others, you know, like uh, strongest mode of whatever, um, you know, hedonic, imperative, etc. Et but the other major um, principle way of understanding why free will is impossible is because we have an unconscious. And when you think, when you when you realize that um, the unconscious is where all of the data upon which we base every decision is stored, and then you realize, oh, wait a minute, it's, uh, it's unconscious to the conscious mind. Our conscious mind isn't aware of it. Then you quickly realize, well, if all the data is in the unconscious, then the processing or deciding has to be in the unconscious. So, so basically you've got, it's really our unconscious. Um, it's an unconscious will. You know, it's a universal will, but it's an unconscious will. And um, I think, you know, thinking about it right now, I think that, you know, I, I probably should promote both terms because, like, the, the, um, the universal will describes in terms of causality, naturally universal and all, but the, the unconscious describes our human will, I think, in a way that's kind of, like, closer to us, you know, because the universe involves everything, the unconscious, something that's within us, so. All right. Um, so, all right, so now we know that... Um, Free will is an illusion, and it matters because, like, you know, we're living in a world where we blame. And it, all right, I want to get to this. <laughs> Basically, this is about enjoying our universal will. Um, I, I did a show um, before this from 2003 to 2006 called The Happiness Show. It was the first television series on human happiness, about 140 episodes. And um, so, you know, happiness is really the point of everything. I mean, like, this topic of, of human will is very important to happiness because, like, our getting this wrong limits our happiness so much more than it would need to. But, um, but really, the, the purpose of life really is, you know, to be happy, to feel happy, um, experience pleasure, avoid pain and all. All right, so how does understanding our wills as universal um, make life more enjoyable? Well, one thing, think of like, think of, you know, we have, we have responsibilities that we have to, um, take care of. We have things we have to do. We have things we're called upon to do. And, you know, it's not up to us, of course, but, um, a lot of times we feel a great burden of responsibility, you know, like, um, well, on a personal level, you know, we are human beings. We are, um, we do wrong. We, we do things that are, um, you know, not right a lot. And, and then we worry, you know, we, we, because we think we have a, could I have a camera change? Because, I don't know if, I don't know if anybody's back there. What the? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. Um, because, because we, um, 
because we don't have a free will, um, you know, we can't, we can't of our own free will solve the, the climate problem. We can't of our own, we can't do anything of our own free will because we don't have a free will. But, but, you know, curiously, and this is very curious because like as we explore the fact that we don't have a free will, what, what comes to light is that, wait a minute, you've got a universe or causality or the past or whatever's making us decide what we do, making us first believe that we have a free will because obviously, you know, our world wouldn't believe it or, or think it if, if we weren't compelled to, you know, this isn't up to us. So the universe is first compelling us to, to have this delusion, this mistake, and then it's compelling us to, um, to worry, to, f to feel bad about it, to like, you know, um, <clears throat> to kind of like, to feel bad about the good we could have done and, and, and didn't. I mean, like, you know, if you enjoy feeling bad about it, sometimes that, that's a good, but, but a lot of times we feel bad in a way that feels bad. <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, so... Um, to the extent we understand that, no, it's not our fault, okay? Nothing is our fault. Nothing's our credit either. We can't take credit for anything either. Fine. But to be able to not, you know, be responsible completely, literally, truly, factually for anything, that, you know, that, um, it's absolution. It's absolution from responsibility. Um, and, you know, I got to say this, it's not like we're not going to, quote unquote, um, stop doing what's right because we're, you know, we're programmed. We're going to do what's right because, like, regardless of whether it's, it's us who's, who's doing it or not, that's the way we're, um, we're conditioned. No, no, I can't, that, it's not that easy. Um, all right. The reason we'll continue doing, hopefully, you know, the reason doing right will continue to be important to us is because we, we, we have the understanding that um, whether or not it's the universe or, or us, you know, this little person or this little decider inside of us, which can't exist, but, you know, whatever is deciding our, um, our decisions, making our decisions for us, um, is, I don't know, I lost my turn of thought. <laughs> okay, whatever. We've got like 19 minutes left. Um, Okay, so yeah, basically what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that um, the free will illusion um, burdens us with personal responsibility. We feel the weight of, of personal, you know, like, did I do uh, well enough? Um, did I do good? So, you know, all right. Um, so to the extent that we understand that free will is an illusion, that... Um, our human will is universal or causal or unconscious. We, um, it connects us. It connects us to everything. It's like we're not like competing with, with everything. We are in a certain sense because that's how we're compelled in a way, but like this new understanding, because again, the universe is compelling this new understanding of hum human will. It's, it's a unifying understanding. It, it brings us all together. You know, the free will perspective just separates, divides. <laughs> okay, I got to take a drink. Okay. Um, I didn't want to do a show today because, like, this, it's right after the holidays. And I'm still kind of, like, not, you know, back to my regular routine. But um, I'm getting there. All right. So... All right, this is cool. Um, to the extent that we um, understand that free will is an illusion, you know, we have universal wills, our relationships will improve because, like, think about it. Somebody very close to you does something wrong. You consider it wrong, whatever. Um, you believe they have a free will, the conversation would go something like, well, you know, um, why did you do this that was wrong? Why, you know? And naturally, when you say that to somebody, a person's going to feel a bit defensive whether they, you know, whether they did it or not. So, like, so instead of, like, going, you know, saying to a person, why did you do this wrong? You can, you would say to them, wait, you know, why did the universe compel you to do this wrong? 
Right? See the difference? There's a world of difference between you know, the two ways of saying it. One is fraught with blame, accountability, attributability. It's delusion. It's, it's insane. You know, why did you... I mean, because like, when we say, why did you do wrong, what we're saying is, why did you freely do wrong? Which is, you know, that's the mistake. So again, so like, so you would transition from that to um, why, do you, why did the universe compel you to do something wrong? Now, again, the person might say, well, wait a minute, the universe is, um, is telling me right now that, um, that it doesn't think that what I did was wrong. That's a different kind of like, you know, way the conversation can go. But let's say, let's say the person acknowledges that it was wrong, okay? Um, the universe has the person acknowledges it. So then the question becomes, all right, it's, it's an exploration. It's not an indictment. It's not a competition to win whatever. It's an it's a exploration to understand the dynamics of that behavior. You know, because when you understand why a person did something in the past, then you can more easily understand how to change that behavior and correct it and improve it um, for the future, because that's what we do. So, all right, so, um, <laughs> all right, uh, so more harmonious um, relationships. Um, and this works. This really works, because, like, you know, I mean, again, this is like, this is episode 47, but then I did another eight, eight, uh, eight episodes with um, some co-hosts, so we're way over 50 now, and, like, so I think about this a lot. And I, 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 you know, I try to apply it to my life. So what, what's happening now, and it's not, let me tell you something, it's not fail-proof uh, because, like, if any of us, any of us have been conditioned for, you know, however many years that we have a free will, you can't automatically say to yourself, all right, no, I don't have a free will, so that means I'm going to act, you know, as if I don't have a free will all the time. You know, keep that consideration in mind. Um, so, but, but what's happening in my experience in my life is that, um, yeah, I, um, you know, when, when I do something, let's say, let's say I do something wrong. Um, um, speak to somebody, I speak to somebody in a way that's like a little hostile or less, you know, not considerate, whatever, you know, um, maybe, I, you know, it's unpleasant, okay? Um, now, under, under the free will perspective, I'm saying to myself, damn, I'm, you know, I'm going to feel bad. I'm going to feel bad about myself, you know, having done that wrong. Um, and that's not a good feeling. You know, that's not a good feeling. So, so what do I do? I mean, like, um, when I do something wrong, all right, I say to myself, fine, the universe made me do this thing that's wrong. But, um, but if I blame myself... If I, if I um, punish myself, you know, that's, um, that's going to be worse. That's going to be like two wrongs. You know, and, 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 you know, it's not to say like once you understand that we have a universal will and that we don't have a free will and you do something wrong, um, that doesn't mean that, that um, you can't correct it, you know, because, uh, you know, the universe, again, we have a moral imperative, you know. Basically, whatever we do um, has to fit our moral parameters, you know, like, and, and these are conditioned naturally by our society, by our parents, whatever. But, um, but yeah, when, when, to the extent that we understand that free will is an illusion, when we do wrong, we, what, what we'll do, <laughs> what, what we end up doing is we end up blaming the universe. That's the logical extension, the logical, logical correlate to all this. Um, you can't blame us. It's got to be the universe's fault, God, whoever. Um, and actually, I, I prefer not to even blame the universe because then, you know, there's a question, well, is the universe compelled? You know, I mean, it's naturally, in other words, like, it is like, all right, the universe right now, at this very moment in time, has one direction, one future, okay? So, like, so, yes, so in, in a sense, the universe right now is compelled by the universe um, a moment previously, and that is compelled by the universe a moment previously, you know, causality. But, um, so in terms of, like, if we want to continue blaming, <laughs> um, 
we couldn't blame the present, the current state of the universe. We would have to blame the universe that existed um, <laughs> at the beginning. And that, that, that naturally, you know, this is, this is such a cool um, topic because, like, first it's so, like, surreal that we're just, like, you know, puppets or whatever. But then you get to, like, when you, when you start thinking about causality, cause and effect, it also makes you think about like, well, wait a minute, you know, like, was there a beginning to everything to this universe, you know? Um, how could there have been a beginning? Because there must have been something before, but wait a minute, how could there always have been something? It must have started at some point, and you get into this really, really, um, you know, pretty mind-blowing kind of consideration of the nature of reality, the nature of time, the nature of existence. Um, and so, like, that's, that's actually one of the cool things about this. I mean, like, it's a new world. To the extent that you understand free will is an illusion, the world becomes different. Um, and naturally, as I said before, you can't fully integrate and, and experience this and act according to it, you know, just by, by willing yourself. If you had a free will, you could. <laughs> but, but see, what's, what's happening is... In order to, to, to really um, enjoy and, and experience and, and you know, really relish this, this surrealness, this, this, this new, amazingly wonderful world that, that we're coming to understand that we have, um, we have to, like, we've got to, like, overcome, you know, years of conditioning. Um, sometimes people say that... Um, that um, our notion of free will is like, it's kind of, um, it's natural. Now, I haven't, I haven't um, explored the research on this um, very much. In other words, that like, that, in other words, like, that we weren't taught that we have a free will. It's something we came to, you know, on our own. Um, I got to do a show on this because um, I absolutely have to do a show on this. I, I'm pretty convinced that no, that, um, that basically, as a child, an infant, an infant does something, all right? Like, yeah, let's explore this right now. An infant does something. Let's say, moves a finger, okay? Um, notices the finger moving and say, whoa, I did that, okay? The, the infant will, will recognize that, you know, I did that. My, my mom didn't do that. You know, my brothers or sisters didn't do that. I made that happen, that finger move, Okay. The infant has that awareness, but at no time, in no way, does the infant or the child, whatever, ever say to itself, "Huh, um, I, I did that completely on my own, and nothing <laughs> that's not in my control caused me to do that." <laughs> See, because like infants don't have that uh, kind of rash reasoning ability. Neither do toddlers. Neither do. Um, I don't know when you might develop that. Um, a lot of adults don't have this actually. But um, none of um, well, in order to have this kind of more complete understanding of of what what why we do what we do, or of questioning it, in, in order to to question you know um, whether we have a free will or not, yet you, you have to have like some some kind of some kind of. Um, past learning, you know, to base that on. In other words, like, the, the, um, yeah, just the concept. I did this completely on my own without anything that I'm not in control of compelling me. That's, that's, a, pretty, that's a pretty complex kind of um, conclusion that, that, that has to, um, without any, all right, think about it, without anything that it's not, that's not in my control compelling. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think that the, the, the children, um, and, and in fact, I think children think the exact opposite. I mean, think about this. Um, you know, you ask a kid, a, a kid does something wrong, you ask him, why did you do that? You know, that, the first answer will probably, probably be, I don't know. You know, um, you know, and and the, and think about it. The 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 kid when when we're asked that question, why did you do that? Um, we're guessing. 
Why did I do that? Huh, let me sift through my memory bank. Okay, let me try to figure out why I did that. You know, let's say it's wrong, whatever. And, um, and naturally, you know, when we do that, we, we get to understand that um, this is because of our, you know, memories and all that stuff, our, you know, our data that's unconscious. But, but again, to a kid, to a toddler, you know, they're not going to be making that kind of assessment. So I, I think the more accurate, you know, real world view of, of, of our, our human will, I think, is that no, we just do stuff. We don't know why we do it, you know. We can't, you know, say why we do whatever. All right. I think you get it. It's like, um, basically, I, I, don't, I don't even think that, um, that it's kind of um, intuitive in any manner to, to believe we have a free will. I think it's just, um, it has to be conclusion. It has to be um, a taught conclusion. Um, okay, uh, what else? We've got six minutes left. Um, yeah, I want to I wanna key in, you know, this is about enjoying our universal will. And um, part of the enjoyment is to get us in touch with the wonder of it. <laughs> it's amazing. It is absolutely surreal. It's amazing. It's mind-blowing. You know, we, we think we're the authors of our thoughts. We think we're deciding whatever we decide and all that. We're not. We're not deciding, I mean, of our own free will. We're not, you know, in other words, everything we're deciding we have to decide because the universe or whatever is making us decide. Um, you know, I, I, um, I start out the show with a quote by John Searle saying that, you know, this is the biggest thing, you know, bigger than Einstein, Copernicus, Galileo, New Newton, Darwin. Um, but then there's a, a, a something he says afterwards that, like, it will alter our whole conception to, um, to our relation with the universe, something like that. And that, that's that's so true because, like, you know, under the free will perspective, we are subjects. You know, we're actors. We're acting. Or, well, no, I shouldn't use the word actor. We're kind of like the author, you know. We're authoring stuff. Um, under, under the causal will perspective, <laughs> you know, we, we, um, it's the exact opposite. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, we've got about four and a half minutes. So, no, the idea is like, all right. To the extent that we think about this, think about this. I mean, come on, you know, we're just like we're playing everything out, and 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 we're completely deluded in thinking that we're not. <laughs> That's major, major, major. And another, I think, another benefit, another way we can enjoy this is like thinking. You know, to the extent we exercise our mind, our our our. I mean, we, we shouldn't think too much sometimes because that's not so good. You know, our in instincts are better guides sometimes. But in a certain sense, like, you know, our, our educational system has gone from, <clears throat> no, I, I don't know if it ever actually taught, you know, logic and thinking as, as a primary um, subject, you know, because basically I think education has always been about, like, imparting knowledge, you know, how to read, how to write, you know, how to do math. And then you, you memorize it and you implement it. But, um, but to the extent we consider this question of human will with causality, you know, and consider the unconscious, consider the fact that, that, you know, if we have an unconscious where all our data is, then the processing has to be, all our decisions have to be made at the level of unconscious. I mean, this, this kind of stuff can um, reawaken the intellect of humanity because, like, you know, I mean... God, what we're doing to the planet, you know, the, the vacuousness of, of, of us as a population in politics, allowing the 1% to just, like, rule everything and, and, you know, screw everything up. You can't blame them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, basically the extent that we, we get this, we'll create a much, much, much more, more intelligent world because this is, like, this is the kind of topic that, um, that invites intellectual inquiry. And it's not like... <clears throat> it's not like abstract. It's not like, you know, how do you know you know? You know, who knows? <laughs> this is like very factual. And, and, it, and it relates to the very nature of who we are, you know. Uh, you know, it's why we do what we do. What could be more fundamental? Maybe who we are. But if, if we do what we do, 
<laughs> because the universe is compelling us. Obviously, we are the universe. And uh, naturally, that's, that's kind of like an idea that's, um, that's not new. That's like, you know, religions have been saying that for, um, for centuries, millennia. Um, okay, we've got about two more minutes. I want to talk about my book. I wrote a book. Um, this, um, <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Um, all right, so what else? All right, yeah, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I did, um, we've got a show in Manhattan. Okay, it's called Myth of Free Will. It's live, 11 o'clock every Wednesday. Okay, and you can call in. There's two numbers. Okay, so if you live in Manhattan, you can catch it on the TV in Manhattan. If you live here in White Plains or anywhere in the world, that um, the Manhattan Neighborhood Network, the, the station that broadcasts, that also streams the episode live through the Internet. So you can call us. And the great thing about this show is like, you know, right now you're seeing this. You probably have a lot of questions. You have stuff that, you know, you're wondering about. You can't really ask me. I mean, I could like do this live, but, it, you know. But so, yeah, 11 o'clock every Wednesday, um, Myth of Free Will, um, Manhattan. I think it's like Channel 56. Okay. Um, so, no, we've got more time. And I've got to like add another like 18 seconds to this because like, I did, um, I'm working with a new um, opening tag, you know, because like the, the last opening tag was like 30 seconds long. And I felt that was too long for the internet, especially. So I cut it down to like um, 12 seconds. So, um, so if we can go like, I don't know if, now nah, nah, we better, because like, I don't know if this like clock goes backwards. This is, all right. Um, all right. Well, anyway, you know, we're, we're winding down and um, I, um, this is great because, like, we're going from kind of like understanding that free will is an illusion to now, what does it mean? And it's, it's as new for me as it is for you because it's very cool. All right. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks.